there is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world, and that's why I am on the trail of a Nephilim. The Genesis 6 narrative states that the Nephilim are on the earth in those days and also afterwards. If that's true, can we find evidence that corroborates this? I'm L.A. Marzulli. Join me as we go on the trail of a Nephilim. I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. Welcome to another episode of On the Trail of a Nephilim. Um, we'll be getting into what uh, Gary Wayne, author Gary Wayne, this book is incredible for anyone who wants to do a deep dive into the Nephilim and the Genesis 6 conspiracy. But we'll get into this and so much more. But first, a word from our sponsor. Folks, geopolitical tensions are escalating. Boy, is that an understatement. Inflation is raging, despite what they say, stocks are sinking. Debt is rising, and your own financial future isn't looking too clever. Yet gold endures every crisis. Wars, disasters, no calamity has beaten gold. While paper assets crash and burn, gold endures every time. You need to take a fresh look at gold, steady in your portfolio. And right now, get a three-ounce Silver American Virtue coin when you open an IRA with Noble Gold Investments today. Shield your savings with Noble Gold Investments. Folks, go to noblegoldinvestments.com, noblegoldinvestments.com, noblegoldinvestments.com. It is the only company that I trust. We have invested a portion of our portfolio with them, and I'm really glad that they did last week. I know it was hovering around 2000 uh, 50. So it's on. It's it's definitely an upward trend, and who knows how far it's going to go. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. I just finished this book by Gary Wayne. The sequel is coming out. We don't carry it in our store. Um, I'm going to try to carry it in the store. It's it may be. It it's so in depth. It's just a mind blower. I'll give you an idea. When I when I sit there and and read a book, I'm I'm outlining and underlining, I should say, highlighting different pages. So there was a lot of work for me to do, as you can see. Um, Gary is just incredible, just prolific. But this this little clip comes from this, this film here, Out of Place Artifacts. I think you'll find it interesting, and I'll just roll the clip and we'll talk about it at the end. There's a the common sort of worldwide understanding that knowledge had come from the gods to help build civilizations and build the monuments. And in the book of Enoch, uh, this is probably best said and clarified in terms of the fallen angels, which are known as gods in other polytheist religions around the world, provided this ancient knowledge and technology, uh, including everything from astronomy to mathematics to all the requirements to build these fantastic monuments and this is part of the knowledge base that seems to be part of the antediluvian world that slowly takes hold again after the flood and it combines with knowledge in this culture and other cultures of knowledge that they were developing already but at more of a primitive level so most of the the civilizations around the world all give credit to the knowledge that they received to build monuments back to the gods who they worshiped. So that's Gary Wayne. And what I find interesting is he goes back into the Book of Enoch. And you know that I've talked about this. In fact, we've got a couple of copies of it right here um, on my desktop. Um, I've, I've read the Book of Enoch numerous times and continue to do so um, because you just don't know what you can glean from reading something four or five or, or 20 times or whatever. There's always something new to pick up. But the bottom line is a lot of people won't look at the Book of Enoch. And sometimes we get emails from people, oh, don't look at that. It's a da, 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 da. And I understand that. But what the Book of Enoch, Enoch 1, shows us is that there's a direct intercourse. And I'm using that word in two ways. One, because, yeah, they're here, but sexual intercourse also. 
And that's the basis of Genesis 3.15, which really is our wheelhouse. I mean, that, and I, again, I owe this to Gary Stearman, who illuminated that dec well over a decade ago now at the Nephilim Mounds Conference in Ohio. When Gary lectured, it's all about the seed, talking about the seed war. It was a um, just a springboard for that entire conference for the rest of the speakers. Basically, Genesis 3.15, pre-incarnate Christ talking to the dragon, your seed will be at war at enmity with the seed of the woman. The one coming from the woman, the proto-evangelion, the Messiah, will crush the dragon's head. That's the entire Bible. It's not really taught at churches. You don't hear this. And yet, without that, what do we do when we get to the Tower of Babel? What do we do when we get to Nimrod becomes, you know, a Gaborim? What happens with Abraham and the five kings? What happens with Sodom and Gomorrah? How then do we interpret when the, the field of battle with the Israelites are gathered at the gates of the promised land? It's the seed war. And the Lord just showed me that fairly recently. Those of you who come here understand that I've been talking about this for a while now. But they are the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel. It's been 400 years since Abraham got tapped out by the pre-incarnate Jesus, telling Abraham that through your seed, there's that seed war again, all the nations of earth will be blessed. But guess what? You're going to go down to Egypt for 400 years until the sin of the Amorites comes into its fullness. That is just unbelievable because at that point in time, there are no 12 tribes. There's just Abraham, and he's like 90 years old. And Sarah is the same, and they're well past. That's why Sarah laughs. She's going, well, how's this going to happen? You know, I haven't, I haven't had my moon cycle in, in 30 years, 40 years. So how's this going? This isn't going to work. And this is why I love this. Chuck Missler um, told me this years ago. He believed, as I do, and this is why it's so miraculous. God reversed their ages. Oh, he can't do that. God can do anything. He reversed her. He rejuvenated them. Why? Because when Sarah goes down with Abraham to Egypt, Pharaoh wants Sarah in the harem. And Abraham lies and says, oh, she's my sister. And we, most of us know the story. Pharaoh gets really ticked off because, you know, a lot of bad things are happening. He's trying to figure out what's going on here. And then he finally figures out that Abraham lies. And he says, Abraham, why did you lie to me? You know, I took your wife into my harem. And now all this stuff is erupting. You don't take a 90-year-old woman into your harem. You just don't do that. So in my opinion, he, he, re, he regressed them. He rejuvenated them. But the point I'm trying to make is this. It's just Abraham and Sarah. And then 400 years later, we have the 12 tribes. We've got, depending on who you talk to, but a lot of people, hundreds of thousands of people coming out of Egypt and they're going up to the promised land. Guess who's there? This is the manifestation of the seed war because what we see in the promised land are the Zanzumim, the Emims, the Nephilim, the Anakim, the Rephaim, the Horites and other Nephilim tribes, the Amorites, Nephilim tribes, which are there. And this is where it's a seed war the Nephilim are there, and the children of Israel, and they go at it. Your seed, your offspring, will be at war with the offspring of the woman. I mean, it's right there. And then it manifests at the conquest of Canaan. But if we don't know Genesis 3.15, then that's hidden from us. And we have to come up with all sorts of other interesting interpretations. I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, folks, Gary Wayne, uh, his book is, is just incredible. Thank you, Gary, for, for sharing that with us and coming on the record. And uh, uh, you can check this out by going to Out of Place Artifacts. That's what this is from. On the Trail of the Nephilim, number eight in the series. You know, you can go to our streaming site, binge watch them all, and uh, we encourage you to do that. A lot of people don't have DVD players anymore. Everything is moving into streaming. We, we know that. That's why we have a streaming site. But that's number eight. You can check it out. Streaming.lamarzuli.net. Streaming.lamarzuli.net. I will be at Claremont Church. Uh, more about that. Hopefully we'll get it up on, the, up on our site soon. And then, of course, at the end of the month, I'll be down in Texas at Dan Crestman's Church. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate your, your patronage. Christmas is coming. And I realize he more than likely was not born on Christmas Day. I totally understand that. 
But that's what we celebrate. And is it, was it wrong to celebrate that, L.A.? That's up to each person. You know, we, we celebrate it. We celebrate the birth of the Messiah. It's, it's a joyful occasion. And I understand he wasn't born on Christmas Day. Please don't write in. And it's not a pagan holiday. It was, but it's, now it's not. I'm worshiping the Christ child. I don't know what you're worshiping. I think most of you out there will agree that, okay, you, you can make some cases that maybe we shouldn't be doing this, and some of you will. But we've turned it all around. And for most of us, we're celebrating the birth of our Messiah. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, check out Out of Place Artifacts, number eight in the Ama Trail of a Nephilim series. More Ama Trail stuff coming out next year. Once we get the these last three films in our UFO film series completed, we'll be back on the trail, and that's always exciting. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Remember, there is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world, and that's why we are on the trail of a Nephilim. Thank you.